Beep, beep. Oh, what is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and in today's video, we're going to do something very simple that you're probably going to be like, why didn't I think of that? And that's the funny thing. A lot of the answers to questions we have with productions is just that. But one of the problems I see sometimes with some of my students and some of you guys' tracks is the fact that you utilize drum fills that make no sense in relation to your track. And what I mean by that is you'll, you'll have a snare that's like, bah, 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 and then the drum fills something like, bah, 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 and then it goes into like some progressive house drop. I'm sure a lot of us are guilty of doing that. Now, if you kind of go from the idea that these drum fills can be seen as blueprints that you can utilize with the drums you are using in your track, then you could probably make some really good drum fills that make sense. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, which again, it's very simple, but I, I hope that it helps a lot of you guys out. And this is actually what I do sometimes when I have a little bit of writer's block when it comes to drum fills and whatnot. So here we are inside of Ableton, guys, and I'm just going to grab a random drum fill. We'll grab this one here, which is going to be uh, from the reveal, Sound of Revealed pack, which I got a long time ago. Uh, and it's going to sound like this. Okay. Uh, so as we can see, you know, you might use that and it might work, but it would actually work a little better if you were utilizing the drums from parts of your song. Okay, so let's assume here we want to create something like this. So what I'm hearing, and again, some of you guys might have difficulty with that. I understand that. But again, this is also cool to learn how to manipulate samples and whatnot. But what I'm hearing is a reverse cymbal or a reverse ride going into a snare and tom hit. That's essentially what that is. So if I wanted to create something like that with samples that say I already have in my song, then I could probably utilize the ride or the crash that I've been utilizing throughout the song. So for instance, let's say I go into the stamp pack that we am currently working on with the producer school, and I decide to grab, you know, let's say a crash, which would probably be they put it in the drum section i believe so we're gonna go there sorry i have two folders um for it it's a little messy right now so we're gonna go uh yeah drums crashes and then we're just gonna um reverse one that one seems to work so i can do something similar all i have to do here is unwarp it and i'm gonna reverse it that's gonna give me something very similar to that now i find it sounds a little weird when it starts so i am gonna actually go from a little far so that way i'm gonna mute that we get that instead of the one that they have now see i'm improving a little bit on it all right cool uh so from that let's say in my song i have some snares now Let's see if I can find that's a trap one. Um, let's see if I can find like a good one. I think this one will work. Then I could start to do this very easily. So it's gonna be okay. Now from there, I would layer like a tom with it, and obviously I want a tom that's gonna be heavy, uh, a little bit of a heavy tom. So we're gonna go into the percussion shots. There we go, and we're just gonna layer that bad. Now we can kind of compare, see what else is missing. So there's like sort of like this other shot that happens on the next one. So, uh, so we're gonna add another top two. Maybe we can use that and then we have that. So now, okay, cool. Again, very simple as you guys can see, but sometimes, you know, it's kind of like a little bit like tunnel vision. You you go like, ah, just use that, but it makes no sense. So from there, I can just get this into like a drum buzz. I'm just gonna put a, a drum. I'm definitely gonna need a little bit of reverb on that. That's for sure. So we're just gonna put this there. Let's compress it as well. Okay, and then we're gonna add a bit of reverb to these guys. It's probably gonna be a little bit of the shorter one since we end there. There we go. Okay, and then from there, we would just EQ each one individually to taste. So obviously we have the tom, the, sorry, the clap or snare. Okay. Can probably make that hit a little harder, but I'm just gonna leave it down because I know this tom is going to be giving a lot of the power. From so yeah, we're just going to leave that open. We're going to leave that for that. And then this, we want more of the high on it. So we're just going to do that. Probably add a bit of air, which just means put a high. I do have a plug in. I like better for doing this kind of stuff, which is the Mag 4. Don't buy it just because I use it because it's expensive for what it is but if you find it on sale i think it's worth grabbing 
Let's get rid of the four. There's a little bit of a shot there, like resting. That little fucker, man. There we go. Cool. And do your own thing. Now, again, we could do this for a lot of different um, drum fills. That's the cool thing about it. We'll do one more just for fun. Uh, let's say we'll grab this one. What the hell is this? Um, so, uh, yeah, this one looks a little weird. Uh, I don't know if that's right. Okay, uh, they're at 128, so maybe. Okay, uh, so this is another cool one. Let's say you have your song and you have certain impacts that you've been using throughout it. Then obviously this would be a little easier to do as well. All I would have to do is obviously I need to get either a sub down or I can utilize any impact. That would create the same effect as that sub down, which is essentially what it is. So you know, I could use something epic like that. You know, so shit's about to happen, dude. I swear. Uh, that's also another one. <laughs> Again, it's giving ideas. Imagine you're just sitting there going like, huh, what the fuck, what kind of drum fill do I fucking need? You're probably going to be there all day unless you already have the idea. So utilizing, you know, the samples, you paid for them, you, or, you know, you took time out of your day to get them. Uh, you might as well, you know, use them to their utmost potential, guys. That's what I always say. So, yeah, we're going to use that. Okay, uh, so we got. And then, obviously, that makes a little sense there. So, uh, from there, let's go. Uh, we'll just kiss it. So I'll use that. Uh, and then what? I don't know what the hell that is. That one's a little weird. That's all I'm gonna say. Because of this little kind of reverse or something to it. Okay, so we'll use that snare. Which there's a tom in there. So that tom is definitely there so we do need to talk again i have like two damn folders for this stuff man i swear but the toms are there the percussion have toms in them i need to clean that up we can use that one and again we're just gonna fine tune play with it so okay so oh man that sounds a little sexier there I don't know. This one has a lot of swing to it. It's not landing on beat. Maybe it's just me. And let's use a clap. Again, you don't have to go with the sounds they're using in terms like using it like that. You can also uh, utilize like different stuff. Like I could go like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to fucking snare there. I want a damn clap. So I think that clap's coming in like a little before that. Uh, we can use clap for fun just there. So that way we... Okay, that one sounds a little cool, I guess, but it just doesn't make sense either. Maybe a kick. That would also work. <laughs> just random. Again, uh, so we can do that there as well. You know, tch, fucking ride. Tch. I think a reverse ride would actually sound good there. Yeah, and then you could just do like uh get rid of automations and and play with the the shaper. Let's see if we can get like another like a crash or something would actually sound good kind of there too. Uh, so again, just for fun. So we'll do. And then I'm going to add one more tom. Something to make that snare hit just sound a little better. Now I could obviously go and grab the clap as well, which will um, accent that. That's just, you know, layering, stacking them layers. Okay. Uh, so you guys get the idea there. And then I could do a double slap and whatnot. But anyways, guys, that is essentially making drum fills. If you use it that way, if you utilize drum fills that have been made already, then it's actually a lot of fun. The last thing I'll say is the other ways are cool too, but I just couldn't really get anything good out of them. And I'll show it to you guys. It's, it's a pretty cool technique. The idea is that you're going to essentially have a drum rack with a bunch of samples in it. 
Uh, you could put in like samples from cashmere, mix it up with a little cymatics and a little bit of salt to make like a delicious little plate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, again, you know, like I'll, I'll use like, fuck, I'll, I'll put random stuff in there. This is the idea with it. I'm sure, you know, there's more thought process behind it, but it, it kind of comes back down to this. And let's, yeah, let's put something like that. We'll do that. Da, da, da. I don't know. I'll, I'll put like a damn I don't know, some random other Tom in there. Okay, uh, so the idea is like this. We're just going to create a MIDI, and we're just going to put, essentially, you can put random, like random spots if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm just going to do it like this for now. And the idea is that from there, you can record with an ARP on it. And then from there, let's say that you want to go on a, on a spree. You want to start hunting people. And then we're just going to resample from the side of Ableton like so. And you have. Okay. And then from there, you can kind of just look at what you've made. Yeah, so maybe you like this and you go like, okay, cool. I can get rid of that. Okay. As you can see, that that's a cool one. Uh, So that one's actually another cool one. And again, you can mix mash them. That's the cool thing about it. So now I could grab, let's say that and mix it with a little bit of this, you know, you know, my friends, your friends, we can all be friends. And then finally, uh, of course, you can do a bit of a pitch bend to it. So if you go into Complex Pro, Formance Down, we can now go into Transposition. So that way we can make it kind of pitch down. All right, so maybe we want it to be a little bit more like And then you get creative with it, of course, and put your effects and whatnot. But I feel like, again, guys, those are some of the ways to make drum fills. I don't like the ARP one a lot that much because you're stuck on that 16 drum pattern, which might work for trap and whatnot, but for EDM and stuff, it's a little different. Um, and do a lot of cool stuff, you know, the, the point of this video is more about the idea of utilizing samples, drum fills that you already have that you're going to end up using. And instead of using drums that really make no sense, switching them out for the drums that you've used throughout your song to, again, bring everything together and not have one of those like, what the fuck? What kind of drum was that drum fill, man? Anyways, guys, you guys take care. I'll catch you guys next time for another video and peace out.